From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Thursday, April 8th, 2021. Slack and Discord file sharing used to spread malware. This finding comes from Cisco Talos Research, finding this an increasingly common attack vector. Threat actors upload malicious files to the platforms, which are then housed in their CDN and linked for access. These links are then shared on other outside platforms with the malware served up by Discord or Slack's infrastructure. The researchers warned that using a legitimate infrastructure generally trusted by other users makes social engineering attacks much easier to pull off. Talos previously identified attackers using Discord to distribute Thanatos ransomware in 2018. Facebook comments on recent user data leak. On Tuesday in a blog post, Facebook acknowledged the free posting of account information of more than 503 million individuals and provided a few more details. Facebook says this is a combination of data, some of which was scraped from Facebook prior to September 2019, using a flaw in the contact importer tool that Facebook says it fixed in 2019. That tool was meant to let you use your contact list to find friends on Facebook. The company treated this data set like a public collection of data, not a data breach, hence its lack of concern over reporting or notifying users. Kring ransomware hits unpatched VPNs. A new report by Kaspersky found Kring ransomware impacted the European industrial sector, which have seen market increases throughout Q1 of 2021. Attackers were able to exploit an unpatched Fortinet VPN, disguise the Kring ransomware as an antivirus product, before encrypting production servers that ultimately forced an unnamed firm to shut down two factories in Italy temporarily. Kring is a relatively new ransomware strain, with operators moving laterally on a target's enterprise network to gain administrator access, with ransomware payloads only encrypting specific files with strong encryption after removing backups. Lockdowns saw the rise of wine scammers. A new report by Recorded Future notes that the start of COVID-19 lockdowns saw a rise in wine-related domain registrations as people increasingly turned to virtual happy hours to keep in contact with friends and co-workers, up to two to three times pre-pandemic levels from April 2020, continuing through March 2021. The report found malicious domains followed a similar growth, delayed a month with a large spike in May 2020, with a total of 4,389 malicious wine-themed domains identified. Malicious wine-related domains as a percentage of all wine domains registered peaked in June 2020 at 7%. Today's cybersecurity headlines is brought to you by Sotero. What could your business do if you could keep data encrypted while the data is in motion or in use? Well, a lot of companies have the answer because they're using a new encryption technology from Sotero. Sotero's data encryption solutions keep data encrypted while the data is in use and in motion. These companies are using Sotero to attract new customers and drive new revenue streams. You really want to check out this company at SoteroSoft.com. That's S-O-T-E-R-O-S-O-F-T dot com. Google Forms used for phishing toolkits. Security researchers at Group IB found the service to be increasingly used to automate malicious phishing campaigns, letting attackers easily create and operate phishing web pages. The researchers found that free email services are commonly used to send phishing data automatically, with Gmail making up about 40%. Google Forms' integration with Gmail makes it an ideal front-end, as it provides a URL that appears relatively trustworthy to click on. Threat actors using legitimate services to obtain compromised data makes it harder to detect and makes it easier for attackers to stand up replacements as phishing sites are taken down. The UK launches a new tech regulator. The UK launched the Digital Markets Unit, a new regulator that will review allegations of any competitive behavior by large technology companies housed inside the existing Competition and Markets Authority. The UK government originally announced its intent to form the new agency last year. The regulator currently doesn't have the power to levy fines until Parliament approves legislation governing its oversight power, expected to be approved by next year. Once obtained, it's expected the Digital Markets Unit will have additional authority to reverse corporate mergers and force companies to comply with its new code of conduct. Huawei restructures AI and cloud business. The company formed its core cloud and artificial intelligence business group 14 months ago, but announced today it would be closing the unit, reflecting its struggles from going to a device maker to a service provider. Server and hardware storage operations from the group will be subsumed into Huawei's Internet Products Department, which houses its R&D. Cloud business will become its own business unit. Huawei's core business of carrier networks, enterprise business, and consumer products has been significantly disrupted by continuing U.S. sanctions. Apple details new tools for advertisers without user tracking. 
with Apple set to roll out its app tracking transparency in iOS 14.5, the company published details on two privacy-preserving ad measurement technologies that advertisers can utilize without tracking users. SK Ad Network lets advertisers see how often an app was installed after seeing an ad without sharing any actual device information, while Private Click Measurement provides a way to measure the impact of ads that lead users to a website. It's unknown when Apple will release iOS 14.5, with the company only committing to an early spring release. Before you move on to your next podcast in your queue, you definitely want to check out the latest episode of Defense in Depth. The episode digs into how to secure big events with Tomas Maldonado, CISO for the NFL, who was in charge of cybersecurity at the Super Bowl. Coordinating with lots of contractors, vendors, the city, and police while maintaining continuous uptime requires a lot of unique considerations from day-to-day security. Be sure to look for Defense in Depth in your podcast app of choice to hear the whole conversation, or just head on over to CISOseries.com. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.